In this video, we're going to be exploring the differential pairs routing feature that was originally introduced in version 6 in order to get a better idea of how it works. The key points to keep in mind is that currently it only supports two routes at a time. And there's a requirement as to how these two routes are named in order for Eagle to recognize them as a differential pair. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. If we notice one member is sig underscore p, the other one will be sig underscore n. Basically one of them has to have the underscore n on the end, the other one has underscore p. The parts preceding these suffixes must be the same. That's how you can tell that these two routes are a differential pair. So let's go ahead and route them using the route command because the auto route does not support differential pairs as of yet so any differential pairs must be routed manually. We go ahead and select either one of them. Okay, and you'll notice that they both start to route together. And we can change the style of the routing by just right clicking to the various wire bend styles. I'm going to stick with this one, the 45s. Only thing to keep in mind here is that you want to be careful how you bend them because sometimes you may overlap them. I'm really going to exaggerate this because um, obviously I could go straight and they would pretty much be perfect, but we don't want to do that in this case here. Okay, now I hit escape and I can finish routing one of them, and I'm really going to exaggerate the difference. Okay, perfect. So I think we can all agree, very obviously, that these two traces are not of the same length. Now we can equalize them using the meander command, which is this one over here. When we activate the meander command, we click on one of the two members. What's going to happen is, usually we recommend starting near an end, that way you have room for the meander to grow. So we left click, and you're going to see a percentage. Basically the longer of the two, is the 100% is 9.63 etc inches. The other one is 72% shorter. Now by moving our mouse cursor away we'll be able to tell how Eagle adds the meanders. Now this is a symmetric meander, in other words both traces are affected. Okay, and obviously it'll try everything in its power to get them as close to matching and you'll see it as a relative length here with the 101 and 100%. What defines whether they're close enough? We'll see that in a moment. Now if we right click, we can get an asymmetric meander. In other words, only the shortest one gets a meander. Okay, and in this case, it allows us to get a perfect 100%. So it's going to be the option we stick with. Now there's no reason that you have to match to the longest one. You can specify a, a length to match to. And this is important if you have several differential pairs and you need them all to be the same length. So say we wanted this to be 10 inches. I could type in 10. Again, it's based off whatever my grid unit currently is. I hit enter. And now we can adjust. We can do, again, a symmetric. Or we can do a single one. Trying to find a perfect length. I can increase it. And there we have perfect 100% match. So I'll left click and leave it at that. Now, like I mentioned, what dictates whether their lengths are close enough is a little parameter in the DRC under miscellaneous. We have here max length difference between the differential pairs. Here it's set to 10 millimeters, um, which is pretty long for most cases, but this is user adjustable. Additionally, if you want to specify any separations between the differential pairs and other nets, you can create a net class, which is not the topic of this video. Thank you very much for your time.